The International Atomic Energy Agency has issued a statement on the Fukushima radioactive leaks. The world's nuclear watchdog says it views the situation at the plant as serious and is ready to provide assistance. The word serious did not appear in an IAEA announcement two weeks ago regarding the water leaks. In a statement released Wednesday, the agency says Japanese authorities are supplying information on the latest developments and IAEA experts are watching the situation closely. Japanese nuclear regulators say a leak of toxic water from the Fukushima Daiichi plant may be worse than they thought. They're reassessing the severity of the spill and they say they may raise their rating by two levels. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say at least 300 tons of highly radioactive water has seeped from a tank in the plant's compound. It's the worst leak from a tank they've seen since the accident in March 2011. The tanks are surrounded by a 30 centimeter high concrete barrier, but workers found the water outside the barrier. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority rated the leak a level one incident on an international scale from zero to seven, but they now say they may revise their rating to level three. Their scale classifies their seriousness of nuclear incidents. Regulators look at how much radiation leaked and how badly a facility was damaged. Level three is for serious incidents. Regulators gave that rating to a 1997 explosion and fire in a reprocessing plant in Tokai village north of Tokyo. 37 workers were exposed to radiation. The 2011 accident at Fukushima Daiichi and the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear accident were both classified as level 7 accidents. It's <coughs> now time to announce the doomsday clock, and it is now five minutes to midnight. Two years ago, it appeared that world leaders might address the truly global threats we face. In many cases, this trend has not continued or has been reversed. The damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plants for that reason, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists is moving the clock one minute closer to midnight, back to its time in 2007. Workers at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say a leakage of contaminated water may have gone undetected for some time. They say the storage tank doesn't have a water level gauge and their monitoring may not have been adequate. Workers found a puddle forming just outside a low wall surrounding tanks near reactor number four. They confirmed that one of the tanks lost more than 300 tons of water. The water contains high levels of radioactive substances. Officials of the Tokyo Electric Power Company say the tank has no water gauge. They say the workers didn't notice the leak in their daily inspections until they saw the puddle outside the barrier. Nuclear regulators have urged the utility to check 350 tanks of the same structure in the compound. If a leak occurred in one tank, we should assume that the same thing could happen at other tanks as well. The plant produces 400 tons of contaminated water every day. That's partly because groundwater is coming into the reactor buildings through cracks in the walls.
Health professionals in northeastern Japan are suspicious about a trend they're seeing after the nuclear accident there two years ago. The normal incidence rate of thyroid cancer in children is one in hundreds of thousands. But 18 children in Fukushima Prefecture have been diagnosed among a population of about 2 million. A panel is examining the impact of radiation on residents. Health professionals are giving checkups to all 360,000 children aged 18 or younger at the time of the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Radioactive substances released in the accident can accumulate in children's thyroid glands, possibly increasing their risk of developing cancer. Health professionals had tested 210,000 children by the end of July. On top of the 18 minors they diagnosed, they suspect 25 others may have the illness. Members of the panel say they can't determine if the accident has affected the rate of cancer among children. They've decided to set up a team of experts to look into the situation. Agriculture officials are out to prove Japanese cuisine is healthy. They're looking to sell more produce and food items abroad. And they plan to ask the government for more than $10 million to do it. The officials want scientists to confirm that eating the national fare can help prevent obesity. They're thinking of conducting experiments with people on a Japanese diet. They say they'll also work with universities and hospitals to monitor elderly people who usually eat Japanese food. They want to identify menu items that offer health benefits. The officials say they'd use the findings to encourage people abroad to eat more Japanese fare. They hope the push will yield big results as the cuisine is already popular with health conscious consumers around the world. Fishermen in areas of northeastern Japan hit by the tsunami two years ago are tipping the scales with their catch. They've already caught twice as many mackerel as they caught last year. The fishermen brought three boats into the port of Funato or loaded up with fish. They quickly transferred the mackerel into containers full of ice. People at the market reported the catch totaled 3,040 tons, nearly double the harvest of last August. Auctioneers are flogging the mackerel at almost a dollar per kilogram. The average for this time of year, fishermen said their catch is bound to revitalize the local economy. Tokyo officials have switched on the city's rain-making machinery for the first time in 12 years amid sweltering dry conditions. Government workers conducted an experiment near the Ogochi Dam on the Tamagawa River. They hope to ease Tokyo's increasingly tight water supply. The equipment releases tiny particles of silver iodine into the air. The particles combine with water vapor in clouds to form droplets of rain. The equipment was activated at two locations in the afternoon. Rain began falling near the dam after the process was complete. 10 to 11 millimeters of precipitation per hour were recorded in the evening. Hot and dry weather has prevailed in Tokyo and nearby areas this summer. It has reduced water levels in the Ogochi Dam to 69% of capacity, far below the seasonal average. The metropolitan government has imposed a cut in water intake from rivers. 
This is a desperate measure to bring rainfall. We will make every effort in the face of the severe water shortage. But we also want people in Tokyo to continue their efforts to save water. The senior government official said it's crucial for Tokyo to continue to function as the nation's capital despite getting little or no rain.